months, and I was really amazed at at who he was by then, you know, and what he had done and why he was invited. And so Connors, I got to meet. I think he liked me because I didn't know anything about him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm from South Dakota. I never saw you before in my life. Be my little baby bumblebee. Buzz around, buzz around, keep a buzz around. Bring home all the honey love to me. Little bee, little bee, little bumblebee. Hi, I'm Rob Word. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. And most of you know that Johnny Crawford was a dear, dear friend, and we miss him. And I'm up in Rapid City, South Dakota, for the Western Writers of America. And guess who lives here? Charlotte Crawford. She met Johnny in high school, and I'm sitting with her right now. Charlotte? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me over. Um, Thank you for having me. For saying yes. I'm well, glad you're here. I am too. It's great yeah. to see you. You know we love Johnny. Yeah. Well, and I know you did too. I met them, yeah. Yeah, he was special. He was. But you met him in high school. I met him in high school. Where was the high school? How did you meet him? Hollywood High. I went to live with my Aunt Charlotte, who I was named after. I had just moved in with her and uh, had to finish my senior year in high school in Hollywood. So. Went to Hollywood High, scared to death. <laughs> Never been in a big school. The school was there, and then the town I was from. So that was a unique experience. Where were you from? Uh, Phillips, South Dakota. Population 1,500, I guess. And how many students were at Hollywood High? 1,500. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more than that. But in, in, this day, in our class, I think there was about 800, 900. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The baby boomers. Yep, the baby boomer. So we both started school at the same time. Uh-huh. So he was just as scared as I was because he had been doing the riflemen for all those years. Mm-hmm. So so everybody knew who he was, though. Yeah, everybody knew him. You know who he was. Girls were drooling around. So. <laughs> were you one of those girls drooling around? I don't know who the hell he would. Yeah. I never saw that before. I never saw the show. Uh, I didn't even know what it was until a little bit later. And then it comes out that the man is eye on me. And uh, probably just because I was a kind of a cowgirl from South Dakota. Uh-huh. That's me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and these are all cousins, uncles and aunts. My grandfather and grand, actually a step-grandmother, which I didn't like her very much. My dad. <laughs> My mom, my brother, these are, my brother has passed away, and plus my mom, plus my parents are gone. Everybody's gone, man. Well, they look like they're leaving now. <laughs> he was doing rodeo at that time, wasn't he? Yes. Yes, he was. And I was impressed, because I loved rodeo. Being above the shoots with my dad, he would be one of the guys from the, one of the organizations that help put on the rodeo so mm-hmm. as a little girl I got to be up above the shoots and watch the cowboys you know get on the horse and get on the bull and ride as long as they could which wasn't very long <laughs> <laughs> eight seconds they yeah. needed eight seconds I mean, no, but we run I loved rodeo I, I had my own horse and stuff like that so I would and we used to have the days of 81 parade in pier every year so my dad rode his horse in the parade and i went, got to go on when i was a little girl and got to go on the front of the cell with him oh how great so that was my Special. experience yeah how did johnny know that you were a cowgirl i don't think he really didn't know until i started telling him about where i was from and stuff and then he was like real interested so and he was so cute you know yeah. I didn't even know who he was. I had no idea. I'd never even seen the rifle. That might have been the attraction. I think it was. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm like, who? Are you? who? <laughs> what? In high school, did he, because he was a singer already, he had some hit songs, uh, mm-hmm. even during the, the days of the rifleman. But I didn't know anything about those either. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't know where I'd been. <laughs> from home. They had TV while you were growing up, though, <laughs> yeah. right? 
<laughs> Not till later on in life. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, it was he became greater than most places. Uh-huh. I remember going and visiting relatives in Los Angeles. Um, my dad's brother lived in lived in L.A., and so we got to go and see my cousins and stuff like that. And I was so impressed with their with the scene programs that they had because we didn't have those mm-hmm. in South Dakota. What's the first show you remember seeing? I think it was it was a it was a cartoon. It was a dinosaur. What was that dinosaur's name? Um, well, I remember Gertie the dinosaur, but that's really yeah, old. Yeah, well, that probably was before my time. <laughs> before my height, too. No, no I'm, I'll am i think of the name. But, but well, maybe it was on the Flintstones. No. No, because that would have been early, earlier than that, probably. It was earlier than that. And we, I'll think of it. Black and white TV. Yep. Were there westerns that you guys watched? Um, not really. I mean, we didn't really know what to watch. We just, I think it was mostly cartoons on that, the, you know, because I was young, mm-hmm. really young, only came because this is our knowledge of the Whitman's California and South Dakota, man. We were backward there. <laughs> now here I am back in South Dakota being backward. It's beautiful here, though, in this house where you're staying. And look at what they've got right here. Is this amazing? This is a fishing creek that runs in their backyard for uh, trout and it's uh, pretty special here. Look at this. I know, look at the mountain. I mean, look at where the black hills of South Dakota now. On a mountain, you know, near Mount Rushmore. So, pretty special. Yeah, it seems to be booming here though in this town. Oh, it's starting to. Mm -hmm. I think everybody wants to get out of LA and come to some (laughs) remote place. I'm like, this is not going to be a remote place anymore. Well, compared to LA, it is. But it is spectacular here. This is really nice. So let's get back to your high school days with Johnny. Did he invite you out? Did you date him more? Um, he did invite me on a on a date. He invited me to a couple of events, and I was really amazed at at who he was by then, you know, and what he had done, and why he was invited. And Chuck Connors, I got to meet. I think he liked me because I didn't know anything about him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm from South Dakota. I never saw you before in my life. Well, it was Chuck like? He was kind of stuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was nice. He was nice to us, but we didn't really get to see him very much. I mean, the right from my head over. over. It was done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right then. But then you and Johnny split up for years though right yeah i don't know what happened. <laughs> i think you know what he he went to texas hmm. and he was making a movie that went well. he was making a movie so i couldn't go and i didn't want to go anyway so we kind of just, <laughs> we just there's cats behind the camera that are kind of shaking <laughs> Making the camera shaking. I hope not. I hope we're smooth for you all out there. I'm visiting here with Charlotte. I don't know. I don't know if we're not anymore. So Johnny took off. He left it. I got into the Lone Star State. Is that <laughs> what we're talking about? I don't know where he went to make this movie, but it was. Um, but we went kind of went our separate ways, and I am not quite sure how we got back together. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like, but. but Some time went by. No. That's a cat (laughs) trying to change focus on the camera. It's eyeing it. What's that blinking red light mean? He likes the red light. (laughs) All right, the cat's gone. We're we're steady now. So here we are. You worked for me when we went to Tombstone. Right. With you all right. Talk about somebody who was stuck up. What did you think of you? Oh, God, he really was sick. <laughs> what a pain in the ass he was. Excuse my language. But, okay. hey, he was wider. Well, then he could pull that yeah. one line special out. Yep. Pretty fast. Well, I was impressed. I mean, I mean, anybody that was an actor, I was like, I mean, mm-hmm. right now. So I was just like, 
Really? Well, we had a good time, and actually, Johnny mm. had worked for me before oh. that, too, in a show right. we were doing in France called Crossbow, The Adventures right. of William Tell, and so he was over there uh, right. with us, and we How shot that. did that thing? Three years. We did that for three years in the three south years? of France, yeah. But he wasn't in every episode. Yeah. He was a recurring no, character, been, a recurring been. character. I found this letter the other day from Johnny before we were casting it, and he said in the letters, just, I know how to sword fight. If you need that, if you want any references, you know, I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. You no, know, he did. Yeah. 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 He and his brother took fencing lessons. Yep. Yeah, that's actually what he did on yeah. the Mickey Mouse Club the first time. Very? Yeah, they, they uh, benched together. Right. And then they looked at Johnny and they said, this guy, we want him as a mouseketeer. Right. And they got him. Wow. Until they said, we have too many mouseketeers. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And they let him go. Yeah. But uh, that's right after that, he got the rifle. He, he worked a lot. He did a Lone Ranger episode with Clayton Moore. They were done like five years. Yeah. And, and good shows. I watch them as often as I can because there's many of them I haven't seen before. Well, there's so many because of, back then they were making over 30 episodes a season. So wow. it's, uh, there's a couple of hundred episodes of The Rifleman. And they're really, really good about it. a really good father, actor. Mm -hmm. you know. Actor? Actor, father, actor. Actor, father. He was. Those were the, the bonds that they have, I think, is one of the reasons the show still holds up. And the, the scripts were good. But yeah. the, the magic that they had between them, it was so palpable, believable. Right. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. I know, love watching it. I do too. And he was the best. And he could cry at the drivers of the hat. I'm like, I think that was a prerequisite for being wow. a, a child actor. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, you're real theater and stuff. Well, when you got back together again later, yeah. this was after White Earth Return to Tombstone. This was after Crossbow. Yeah. And uh, Johnny was with his big band at the time. He was performing right. in those. I loved his voice right. and the music. And he loved that music, too. I, and I I got them a lot of gigs, actually. Mm -hmm. And I would be used to calling, calling people on people maybe, you know, for a wedding or anything like that. Or he did my, he did my wedding, you know. <laughs> Everybody knows that. I, okay, well. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I can remember just making phone calls, business phone calls. I went, Telling people about them and then you end up with the orchestra and the kind of music it was, which was 20s and 30s, which was his favorite in the world. Oh. And he had every arrangement that you could think of, mm -hmm. all the parts you know, for a 12 piece orchestra. Yeah, he had the big book with all of the arrangements. Yeah, I mean, and that's impressive, you know. But his voice was and, so unique. Uh, my little baby bumblebee buzz around buzz around keep a buzz around bring home all the honey love to me little bee little bee little bumblebee I love kids like so much and the fact that we can Sing those songs like you guess was amazing. When we got married, there was no electricity, and so we were outside. And Johnny was so excited because he used a megaphone like Odie right. Valley. Right. And he said, I'll bet all these people have never heard non electronic voices before. <laughs> <laughs> I know, anything that took him back to the 20s, yeah. the way it really was. Mm -hmm. I loved that music, and, and he did too. We did some road trips together where. I had a selection of 20s and 30s um, CDs. Yeah, I don't know. And he goes, wow, where'd you get this? And I thought I had a program just for him for the road. Yeah, I mean, he was born in that in that era somehow. Mm -hmm. um, lived in the Do you remember how you got back together again? What what was the uh, the instant where you said, oh, remember me, Johnny? You know, that cute girl from high school? No, I can't remember that exactly <laughs> what happened, but... All I know is that because of the orchestra, I think that I just kind of fell into that that place where I could, you know, I could call and I could help him. Yeah, uh -huh. right. and he came in. 
in gigs and stuff. And then we were at that club for so long. What is the name of it? Was it like the Atlas or yeah, something like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, well, I was a good guess yeah, on my okay, part yeah. then. But Laura and I used to go yeah. before we got married. We were just engaged to right. to write down the songs that we thought would be appropriate for our oh, wedding. Really? And there were so many good ones, so many yeah. romantic, wonderful songs. That's good to get all day. There, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. And he had a collection of. Classic cars, too, didn't he? That he was leasing to movie? Yeah, he was. And um, we had several cars. I remember I remember when there was a some big some big thing happened in the LA where everybody had to he had to go get all of his cars and bring him up to the house because he was afraid somebody might steal him. Mm-hmm. That was the and house then, up in the hill still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we lived in that house for kind of a while. Yeah, time. that was a that was Paul Fix's house. Yeah, like how strange is that? I don't know. That's pretty. Must have been fixed. Uh, <laughs> well, Johnny was a big, uh, right, a regular as you were too at the mansion at Hef's. He was. He, yeah, he was, and um, I can't remember exactly how they started going up there. You know him? I don't. Remember? This, this is this is your interview. I'm I'm the I know, but facilitator. I'm, I know, but you knew him for so long. Yeah, yeah. I remember him up there a few times because in between marriages, I used to go up there quite often. <laughs> okay. Then, yeah. Then, no, I don't. Know, I was. I don't know. We just started going. He had been going up there for so long, for so many years, and that was nice and reason that he was invited. Well, he was a film buff, as Hef was, and they liked right. the same music, too. Right. And girls, they liked girls. Right. And they had Manly Night every Monday. Mm-hmm. And Johnny was asked to bring different movies up and stuff like that because Hef loved that era, too. Mm-hmm. And Johnny was like a, he was so good at it as the whole, that he knew everything about the 20s and 30s. I don't know why, but he did. Well, even as a little kid, he was... Yeah. Fascinated by silent movies, right? And he talked about on the rifleman. Some of the crew members right. had been not just working in silent film, but a couple of them had been performers in the silent movie. And he mm-hmm. always gravitated toward them. Yeah, it, he could watch a silent movie, silent like, <laughs> <laughs> and that was amazing to me. I'm like. Wow, who does this? <laughs> I guess I, I, I liked, guess you did too. I liked it too, uh-huh. but I mean, it was like he loved it, and that's why it was so good at you know when he did the twenties and thirties. Yeah, great. He was like, and then at the Atlas, we did some and what well, the love he had for that came across in his presentation. And would dress up in the toxins, and the yeah. band would look like that too, just like it was in the twenty. Yeah. Will Ryan and the Saguaro sisters would would right. open the show before the interviews, and Johnny sometimes right. would sing with them. And I was Will Ryan's secretary around that time too. Really? Yeah, I worked for him like the first time. <laughs> I hope he paid better. Oh, I don't know what's the hell. I mean, I never did really care that much about that. He was. Uh, very wonderful guy. He surely was. He uh, was yeah, yeah. a wonderful yeah, writer, yeah. too. No, a couple of years. It just maybe a year before Johnny, wasn't it? Or was it about the same time? But that was amazing. I loved him a lot. He was, he was a wonderful guy. He would always say, who do you know that isn't doing well and I'd like to go entertain him? with the girls and sing, and he would just do it. We probably wouldn't be the Suarez sisters without this gentleman, Mr. Will Ryan of Texas County, California. And of course, none of us would be here if it weren't for Charlotte. Uh Charlotte McKenna Crawford. (laughs) At our heart of gold. He sure did. You know, it was a mother and, and two daughters, and one right. of them moved back to Australia, which is where they were from. They were cousins, right. Will said. And I never knew if I if that was true or not, but I think it was, that they were his cousins. You know? No, I don't know. I don't think they were. Oh, I really I was conned. I was conned. <laughs> but, uh, 
Well, I'm not surprised that he would say that. I love their voices. And there's other singing group from the early 30s, the Boswell Sisters. Mm -hmm. They had that sound, which yeah. is even more unique, I think, than the Andrews Sisters. They were never as big, right. but beautiful voices. She can't help the mischief in those twinkling eyes or the flashing blue that laughs with you. So innocent yet wise. Whoa. Who can help but wonder at the wonder of it all? Hey, she can't help but she falls. And I can't help but fall. We is natural as can be. She's one of a kind. Clearly designed to make an ever-loving fool out of me. Whoa. She can't help the habit of driving me insane. For that slinky way, she tends to stray into my feeble brain. Oh, so divinely fascinating. She drives me up a wall. Say she can't help the cheekbones. And I can't help but fall. No, I can't help but fall. Happy birthday, Charlotte. Happy birthday. With the beautiful high cheekbones, man. Those were the good old days. Well, we, we were honored to be a part of mm -hmm. I've got a love that's true, namely you and the saddlebag full of songs. You the saddlebag full of songs. Yeah, the saddlebag full of songs. We're the saddlebag full of songs. <laughs>